I'm just coming out from a meeting. I basically lost two hours of my time. Like, I knew it was going to be unproductive. I don't even know why I went. Hey, bonjour YouTube. How have you been? That's actually one week I haven't seen you. If you're a manager managing a team or project and you run meetings all the time, you're going to love this video. I mean, if you're an entrepreneur, you're gonna love it too. Everyone has meetings. My last video about how to prepare efficient meetings got some success. And thank you for that. Thank you for sharing my content when you find it useful. What? You haven't watched it yet? Before you watch this video, I think you should watch this one first. While you're at it, maybe you can subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified with every new content every week. By the way, we're on a challenge to hit 500 subscribers, and when we hit 500 subscribers, I will organize a raffle and you may win a big prize. So let's assume that you know how to prepare an efficient meeting, workshop or training, that you successfully prepared it, now you need to facilitate that training, workshop or meeting. That's the topic of the video today. So if you want to know my five tips and tricks that I have up my sleeves to be a meeting rock star, keep watching. First tip is to start with the objective. Always review the objective and the agenda with the participants at the very beginning of the meeting. Ideally, you would have sent it beforehand so that people can know the intent of the meeting before even coming and they're coming prepared. Once you review the agenda with the group, make everyone collectively agree and commit to it. That's a way to constitute your group as a team all aligned to reach this objective. So it becomes not only your objective, but it becomes the group's objective. You can say something like, do we all agree on the agenda and the objective for today? Or you can add something like, if we don't manage to finish by the end of this meeting, then I'm sorry, but we'll have to reconvene. It's your choice. One pro tip is to make your agenda and your objective visible by all participants at all times on a poster, on a flip chart, whatever you name it, but it will allow you to stay on track. The second tip is to closely manage your time. Start on time, keep track of time, and end on time. I always say that with the meetings I organize. If we start on time, I promise you that we'll finish on time. Why do I say that? Because I know that I prepared the meeting accordingly, I designed the meeting in order to fit everything within the schedule. So if we start on time, we'll finish on time. Unless someone blows up my meeting. And that can happen. Respect other people's time and they will respect yours. I mean, I would hope so. Also keep track of time against your agenda. Let's say you have a one hour meeting, you have to cover three topics. You start at 10, the second topic will start at 10.20, the third topic is going to start at 10.40 and you will finish at 11. If it's 10.30 and you haven't started the second topic already, then that's a cue for you, you may be off track. Then you can take action accordingly in order to get back on track. The third tip is to know how to manage difficult people. I think I can do a whole video specifically about it. But if you want to run efficient meetings, you need to be prepared in the event that someone tries to steer you away from your initial meeting objectives. If you're a manager working in corporate, everyone around the table within this meeting have maybe different, slightly different objectives than yours. Hopefully not too much, but you need to make sure that you have tricks up your sleeves in order to manage these people that may blow up your meeting. If there is that person that is talking about completely different topic, that is definitely not aligned with your meeting objective, or if someone is going way too deep into the details, you may say something like, thank you for adding this, I am not completely sure it's fully aligned to our meeting objectives though. So let's put it on the parking lot and we'll cover it later. My good friend Ludo is using the fridge metaphor instead of the parking lot. I guess that works too. I stole from him and I'm using it ever since. I hope you don't mind Ludo. When you think about it, the fridge metaphor makes a lot of sense. If someone is really insisting way too much, then you can tell them, hey, we can maybe have a one-to-one -one conversation about it. I'm very interested in what you have to say. Then that person feels heard and may stop disturbing the meeting. You need to make sure that you do all of this with diplomacy. 
because these are the people that work with you at the end of the day. And you don't want to be conflictual, right? Be constructive, make them gently understand that there is a place, time and setup for every discussion. The fourth tip that I try to use as much as possible is to take notes and send minutes. Something that is too often missed. If you don't take notes and don't share them with the participant, then there is no proof of what has been collectively agreed and decided. If nothing has been decided, then that's another issue. I know that taking notes and sending minutes can seem like a waste of time, but trust me, at the end of the day, you will save a bunch of time. I mean, I've been in meetings where we don't take notes and we don't share a minute with everyone and we end up meeting again on a similar topic and reopening topics and discussions that should have already been closed if we had sent a minute in the first place. Don't trust collective memory. Write a few notes. Just send a couple bullet points with the next steps. And here you go. Just grab the template that I put together. It's in the description below of this video. This is a Microsoft Word document that you can use and reuse and reuse. It literally takes five minutes, but can make you save a lot more. Grab the template and let me know how it works for you. When you see this meeting minutes template, you're gonna be amazed by this simplicity. This is so simple. You don't need much because we want to stay pragmatic. We don't want to lose time just for the sake of writing a meeting minutes. You want to write meeting minutes because it makes sense and because it makes you save time on the long run. Last tip to run efficient meetings is to ban technology as much as possible. I know it's a hard discussion to have with your colleagues or even worse with your boss. But if you're on a tight schedule and you need everyone's attention, naturally technology is going to prevent people from participating, thus not having a very efficient meeting. No phone, no laptop. And if people tell you that they can multitask, that's a big fat lie. There is no such thing as multitasking. I usually like saying this is a phone and laptop free meeting. If you have to take a call or manage an email, then please do it. You can step out of the room and then come back when you're done. I'm completely okay with that. So far, it worked pretty well with me. I think people tend to understand it pretty easily and I actually never had a major problem with this. These were my five tips that I use all the time to run effective meetings, trainings and workshops. What are your tips and tricks? I'm really interested to know. Please drop them in the comment section below. Maybe some of them that I already know, but maybe some of them that I don't and I will really want to try. Don't forget to grab your meeting minutes template in the description below of this video. Thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to like this video and to share with anyone that may need some help to run efficient meetings. If you're still here after more than five minutes, then that means that I grabbed your attention for more than five minutes and I'm very happy about that. So might as well pressing the subscribe button and ring the bell so that we see each other every week. Thank you for your time, guys. Thank you, see you next week. À la semaine prochaine, au revoir.